O'Shares Investments Chairman Kevin O'Leary is most commonly referred to as Mr. Wonderful. Both the television program Shark Tank and CNBC both feature him. Investors who have watched him on television have probably heard him speak about his investing philosophies. Well, are you interested in knowing these dividend stocks we're talking about? Luckily for you, Fortune Fastlaner, you've come to the right channel. Here, we guarantee you that you will have all the information you want to know. Just keep on watching and don't forget to subscribe. Mr. Wonderful searches for stocks that display three key traits. First and foremost, they need to be respectable businesses with sound balance sheets and financial performance. Second, he thinks a portfolio needs to be diversified among several market segments. Third, and possibly most significantly, he insists that the stocks he invests in return dividends to owners. OUSA invests in stocks that exhibit a combination of all three traits. They have diversified business models, are market leaders, and provide dividends to shareholders. The list of stocks in the OUSA portfolio is a valuable resource for high-quality dividend growth equities. The major holdings of the fund are thoroughly examined in this video. Here are the list of the top 10 dividend picks now. Number 10. United Health Group Dividend yield is 1.19%, 2.51% of the OUSA portfolio. In the US, United Health Group is a multifaceted healthcare organization. United Health's net margin are razor thin, as is typical in this market despite the company's enormous revenues, which surpass $250 billion annually. In that approach, there should be a significant danger of unproductive quarters during a recession. In spite of this, United Health has not experienced an unprofitable quarter in more than 23 years because of its top-notch operations and consistent cash flows. On January 19, 2022, United Health released its fourth quarter and full-year financial results. And once again, the results exceeded expectations. The $4.48 earnings per share surpassed projections by 17 cents. Revenue increased 13% to $73.7 billion, above expectations by almost $900 million. Once again, Optum was the main driver for revenue growth, increasing 14% to $41.4 billion in year-over-year -year growth. While United Healthcare saw a 12% increase to $56.4 billion. The medical care ratio was 83.7%, which is still quite high and reflects a $440 million increase in the medical reserve. The operational expense ratio for the entire year was 14.8% of revenue, down from 16.2% in the same period last year. We have set our initial estimate for this year's earnings per share at $21.65 as management once again issued optimistic guidance. Number 9. McDonald's Corporation Dividend yield is 2.48%, 2.76% of the OUSA portfolio. With approximately 40,000 restaurants across more than 100 countries, McDonald's is the largest global food service retailer in the world. Since paying its first dividend in 1976, the firm with a market capitalization of $165.6 billion has increased its dividend each year. Year, making it a dividend aristocrat. McDonald's announced a $1.38 quarterly dividend in September, an increase of 7.0% from the previous year. McDonald's released its quarter 4 and 2021 results for the quarter that ended on December 31, 2021 on January 27, 2022. Total sales for the quarter increased by 13.1% from Q4 2020 to $6.009 billion. In Q4 2020, net income was $1.377 billion or $1.84 per share while it was $1.639 billion or $2.18 per share in Q2019. Compared to the $4.731 billion or $6.31 per share in 2020, net income was $7.545 billion or $10.04 per share. 
Number 8. Lockheed Martin Corporation. Dividend yield is 2.49%, 3.47% of the OUSA portfolio. The largest defense firm in the world is Lockheed Martin Corporation. In 2020, the company's overall sales were above $65.4 billion. On January 25, 2022, Lockheed Martin released improved Q4 2021 results. Due to increased F-35 and classified contract volume, the aeronautics segment's net sales increased by 6% to $7,127 million from $6,714 million in the prior year. Sales of the tactical and strike missiles as well as integrated air and missile defense grew 12% to $3,219 million from $2,866 million in comparable periods, offsetting lower sales of global sustainment and sensors. Due to the renationalization of the Atomic Weapons Establishment Program, reduced volumes in civil space initiatives, and greater sales for strategic and missile defense programs, the space segment sales decreased to $2,923 million from $3,240 million. Due to a non-cash pensions expense, Lockheed Martin's diluted earnings per share decreased to $22.76 from $24.50 for the year, while sales increased to $67,044 million from $65,398 million. The backlog at Lockheed Martin is about $135.36 billion with just an increase in space. The Federal Trade Commission filed a lawsuit to stop Lockheed Martin from paying $4.4 billion to acquire Aerojet Rocketdyne. The choice is being looked over by Lockheed Martin. In 2022, Lockheed Martin projected a sales of $66 billion and diluted earnings per share of $26.70. Number 7. The Pfizer Incorporated. Dividend yield is 3.33%, 3.59% of the OUSA portfolio. With a 266.7 billion market cap, it is a mega cap stock. The 2019 transactions made by Pfizer's new CEO dramatically changed the organization's structure and direction. Pfizer and GlaxoSmithKline PLC established the GSK Consumer Healthcare Joint Venture, which will encompass Pfizer's over-the-counter business. Pfizer controls 32% of the joint venture. Additionally, Pfizer finalized an 11 billion acquisition of Array Biopharma, Eliquis, Ibrands, Prevnar 13, and Brel, Chantex, Sutint, Xtandi, Vindacel, Inlita, and Zelljans are some of Pfizer's best selling items. In the medium term, Pfizer's existing product range is anticipated to generate strong top line and bottom line growth. This ought to be fueled by a healthy forecast for the market for its medications as well as the current vaccine deployment, which might provide recurring income in the future given the prospect of additional doses being required to combat COVID-19. On February 8, 2022, Pfizer released stellar Q4 of 2021 and full-year earnings. Pfizer is the market leader globally for its COVID-19 vaccination, holding a 70% market share. The pharmaceutical behemoth is exploring two protease inhibitor antiviral drugs, a flu vaccine, a shingles vaccine, a breast cancer treatment, hemophilia gene therapy, a Lyme vaccine, an RSV adult vaccination, and other treatments. To bring innovative treatments to the market, Pfizer has partnered with a number of smaller businesses including BioNTech, Aquitas, Beam, and Codex DNA. The dividend paid by Pfizer is a respectable 3.33%. Overall, we anticipate 14.7% annual returns over the following five years, which makes Pfizer an alluring dividend stock to purchase right away. Number 6. Apple Dividend yield is 0.55%. 3.70% of the OUSA portfolio. According to market valuation, Apple is the biggest firm in the world. This weighting may come as a surprise given that Kevin O'Leary favors businesses that return capital to shareholders. Based on dividend history, Apple is the newest dividend-paying stock examined in this article, having only provided income to shareholders since 2012. Since then, the dividend has rapidly increased by more than eight times. In addition to the enormous amount of shares that have been brought back throughout the years, this is also 
also true. The lowest dividend yield among the top 10 holdings is Apple's sub 1.0% yield. But investors presumably approve of this trade-off in income for the possibility of future high capital returns. Apple released their Q1 fiscal year 2022 for the period ending December 25, 2021 on January 27, 2022. The final Saturday in September marks the end of Apple's fiscal year. Apple's sales for the quarter increased by 11.2% to $123.9 billion from Q1 2021. Product sales increased by 9.1%, with iPhone sales up by 9.2%, a 58% increase of total sales. 16% of all sales in the quarter were in the form of services, which saw a 23.8% increase to $19.5 billion. In comparison to Q1 2020, when net income was $2.68 per share, it was $34.63 billion or $2.10 per share in Q2022. As the company trades with a multiple of 25 times the earnings compared to our target multiple of 18 times earnings, a major headwind from valuation reversion could significantly outweigh earnings growth and dividend yield. Therefore, over the medium run, we anticipate the stock to deliver below average shareholder returns. Number 5. Home Depot Dividend yield is 2.40%, 4.14% of the OUSA portfolio. Since its founding in 1978, Home Depot has expanded into the largest home improvement retailer with about 2,300 locations across the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Total annual revenue for Home Depot is estimated to be $130 billion. On February 22, Home Depot released their results for the fourth quarter and the entire year. Sales for the company's fourth quarter increased 10.7% year-over-year to $36 billion. In comparison to Q4 2020, net earnings came to $3.4 billion or $3.12 per share. Home Depot's overall sales for the entire fiscal year were $151 billion, up 14.4% from 2020. In comparison to $11.94 per share earned in 2020, net earnings came to $16.4 billion or $15.53 per share. In fiscal 2021, the business repurchased $14.8 billion worth of common stock, a significant increase over the $791 million spent in fiscal 2020. Home Depot had $2.3 billion in cash and cash equivalents at the end of the fiscal year 2021. Additionally, the business will incur net interest costs in 2022 of $1.5 billion. Being the market leader in home renovation is Home Depot's most convincing competitive advantage. In addition to the rapid growth in demand for home improvement items in the United States, the industry is also extremely consolidated with just two big players controlling the vast majority of the market. Home Depot has also demonstrated exceptional resistance to economic downturns, including the coronavirus epidemic, which is thought to have benefited the company as consumers spend more time at home. Since Home Depot has made significant investments to increase its digital footprint, e-commerce is another growth factor for the corporation. Number 4. Microsoft Corporation Dividend yield is 0.89%. OUSA portfolio as a percentage of 4.45%. Microsoft announced a $0.62 quarterly dividend on September 14, 2021, the 20th straight yearly increase. Microsoft stated on January 18, 2022 that it will pay $68.7 billion to purchase Activision Blizzard, a market leader in video game creation and entertainment. Microsoft released its Q2 fiscal year 2022 data for the period ending December 31, 2022 on January 25, 2022. Microsoft struggled to increase its profitability from 2011 to 2015 after years of consistent growth. Microsoft's growth has been revitalized by following significant management changes and a strategy pivot towards cloud computing and mobility. Recent years have seen enticing growth rates for revenues and earnings in particular. 
Thanks to Azure, which has been expanding greatly for a few years, Microsoft Cloud Business is expanding quickly. After switching to the Office 365 software as a service model, Microsoft's Office product line, which had been a cash cow with slow growth for many years, is now displaying strong growth rates as well. Microsoft should be able to sustain a strong earnings growth rate for the foreseeable future due to low variable costs. Additionally, Microsoft has had a sterling track record of dividend growth, with 20 years of continuous yearly dividend increases. Microsoft enjoys a widely competitive advantage in the operating system and office business segments, as well in the cloud computing sector. Microsoft has an AAA credit rating and is also comparatively immune to recessions. Sad Sadly, Microsoft's stock forward P slash E ratio of 32 suggests that it is overpriced. Returns will be boosted by the expected EPS increase of 7% and the dividend yield of 0.89%, but overall total returns seem to be relatively constrained at the stock's current levels. Number 3. Verision Communications Dividend yield is 4.67%. 4.65% of the OUSA portfolio. As it continues to push out 5G service, Verision has now introduced 5G ultra wideband in a number of cities. Of the big telecoms, Verision launched the 5G service first. On January 25, 2022, Verision released its fourth quarter and annual earnings figures. Revenue increased 4.8% to $34.1 billion for the quarter, above expectations by $120 million. Revenue increased by 4.1% to $133.6 billion for the year. And adjusted profits per share increased by 10% to $5.39. Retail postpaid phone churn increased by 7 basis points to 0.81% on a sequential basis. Customer segment revenue increased 7.4% for the quarter due to increased 5G phone adoption rates and a 55K Fios net addition. Additionally, company-wide, the average revenue per account grew. Corporate revenue decreased by 3% to $7.8 billion as weakening in the public sector offset growth in business wireless services. In addition to a sizable boost from a rising P slash E multiple, we anticipate total returns for Verision stock of around 13.6% annually. Verision now has a strong yield and reasonable growth prospects. Number 2. Procter and Gamble. Dividend yield is 2.28%, 4.9% of the portfolio. In terms of dividend stocks, Procter & Gamble is a dependable one. For the previous 65 years, it has grown its dividend every single year. In a list of equities with 50-plus years of increasing dividends, the company now ranks among the top 40 dividend kings. In 2021, many of these product categories experienced strong organic growth rates. Procter & Gamble raised their dividend by 10.0% on April 13, 2021 from 0 $0.7909 per quarter to $0.8698. Results for the second quarter of the fiscal year 2022, which ended on December 31, 2021, were issued by Procter & Gamble on January 19, 2022. Additionally, Procter & Gamble increased its fiscal 2022 outlook, forecast Casting sales growth of 3 to 4 percent and adjusted earnings per share growth of 3 to 6 percent. Going forward, Procter & Gamble is anticipated to deliver profits growth of 4 percent. Over the next five years, valuation would reduce yearly returns by 6.1 percent if shares were to return to our target price to earnings ratio of 20. P&G is a solid stock for long-term dividend growth and current yield, even though we do not now grade P&G stock as a buy owing to its valuation. Number 1. Johnson & Johnson Dividend yield is 2.51%. 5.30% of the OUSA portfolio. Given that Johnson & Johnson is one of the most well-known dividend stocks on the market, it should not be surprising that OUSA holds a significant amount of the company. The market capitalization of Johnson & Johnson, a healthcare behemoth, is approximately $443.6 billion. Johnson & Johnson announced intentions to spin off its consumer health division into a separate company on November 12, 2020. 
adjusted earnings per share of $2.13 were $0.01 over forecast and up to $0.27 or 14.5% from the prior year. Pharmaceutical revenue increased 16.5%, continuing a quarter of double-digit growth due mostly to the company's COVID-19 vaccine, infectious diseases increased by more than 167%. Sales to consumers grew by 1.1% due to a rebound in the product lines for cough, cold, and flu, over-the-counter sales increased by over 16%. Due to divestiture, skin health and beauty saw an 8% decline. Revenue in the medical device industry is rising by 4.1%. Additionally, Johnson & Johnson offered advice for 2022. This would represent a 7.1% increase from 2021 at the midpoint. Due to increases in sales and share repurchases, we anticipate earnings per share to increase at a rate of 6% year through 2027. This is consistent with how Johnson & Johnson's earnings have grown in the past. But since the repurchase will only result in a low single-digit gain each year, revenue growth will account for the majority of future growth. Johnson & Johnson announced a 5% dividend increase on April 20, 2021, marking the 59th consecutive year of dividend growth for the business. Due to his appearances on the television program Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary has gained widespread recognition. But he is also a well-known asset manager and sure dividend shares a lot of his investment philosophies. Particularly, Mr. Wonderful often makes investments in stocks of big successful companies with solid balance sheets and steady dividend growth each year. The Sure Analysis Research Database, which rates stocks based on predicted total return owing to a combination of growth in earnings per share, dividends, and changes in the price-to-earnings ratio, does not currently grade all of these stocks as buys. But a few of these 10 stocks are excellent investments for a long-term dividend growth portfolio. That's it for this video, Fortune Fast Laner. Remember to subscribe to our channel. If you feel like we've delivered value, please share this video with one person. That's right, just one person as a token of your appreciation for the hard work we put into making content that educates and helps you on your mission of building your own fortune. Remember, you can watch video after video, but it isn't until you actually take action that you'll start to see results. See you soon!